If you want to play college basketball, unless you're one of the best players in the world, you're probably going to need these five skills. Now, I'm not the type of guy to be super black and white. Like, if you don't have this skill, you're never going to play at this level. Because let's be real, basketball is a lot of gray area. A lot of players make it without having that prerequisite skill. And a lot of players who do have these skills maybe don't make it. But I really, really, really believe that these five skills are the things that make the best college basketball players. And if you can add them to your game, you have that much more of a chance to make it to that level and succeed at that level. Let's check it out. So number one, let's be real, is shooting and shot making. Most times you're gonna have to be able to put the ball in the basket. Now this doesn't mean that you're gonna have to make crazy ISO shots. You have to make every single shot have a crazy variety of shots. But to me, you gotta be some sort of shot maker. Now this can mean that you're a crazy good finisher around the rim. So that floater game, that touch around the rim is super advanced. This could be just being a knockdown spot up shooter. So every time your team passes to you, they know that you're going to knock it down. This could be being very comfortable in the mid range. And of course, this can be a combination or just all of these in kind of a well-rounded fashion. But again, I'm going to get into defense. But basketball is a lot of the time about scoring points. And I have seen players held back because they just don't have that level of confidence in their shot making. Most importantly, you got to be able to make these shots at high speeds on tough defenders while you're tired in the context of a game. If you can do these, check this off the list, you're good to go for number one. Number two is gonna be two foot finishing. There are actually statistics that show that if you watch a college basketball game at essentially any level, at least 70% of the finishes, successful finishes that is, are gonna be off at of two feet. Now, why is this? Number one is because the lane is so packed in college basketball. When you enter that paint, there's probably gonna be two defenders there. There's not a defensive three seconds like there is in the NBA. So you gotta be able to come to a stop, pass out of it, make a decision, and finish with strength. So if we take a player that jumps off of two feet and a player that jumps off one foot, let's say they're equal level strength, all that, they get bumped in the air. The player who goes off of two feet is probably gonna be much more controlled, much more able to accept that contact than the player who goes off of one foot. It's because you're a little bit more symmetrical in the air, you can control your jump a little bit more, etc. Plus you can change directions last second. So on one foot, if I'm going straight, it's tough to really change my angle on the jump. Whereas if I jump off of two feet, I can jump literally any direction I want. And again, this is why a lot of college coaches emphasize two foot finishing. This is why it just naturally happens, right? Two foot finishes just kind of emerge from the style of play in college basketball. So I would strongly suggest getting comfortable with these. They're gonna help you take your game to the next level, I promise you. Number three is being a versatile defender. So what this means is being able to defend multiple positions, and different types of systems and being able to defend different types of players. So just like there are different types of playing styles for offense, there are different types of playing styles for defense too. You can be kind of the pesky, shorter defender who just bugs the crap out of everyone. You can be a little bit more strategic, right? And just kind of sit back, play it safe. I could go on and on here, but my point is depending on what system that you play in, you may have to adjust a little bit. You may have to become that more pesky defender, or you may have to play it a little bit more safe and kind of scale back that aggressiveness. You may have to guard shorter players or taller players based on the system. Maybe you guys are playing small ball, so now you have to adjust to guarding a taller player. Coaches need players at the college level who are super versatile. So not only do you have to be a good defender, but you have to be a very well-rounded defender. If you can do this, and I suggest working on this by just playing against a bunch of different types of players, trying a bunch of different styles. And if you can get good at this, I promise you coaches will look at you in a crazy high light. Number four is handling pressure and physicality. College basketball is a physical game. Whenever you drive downhill, there will be people not only reaching in, but stepping in to kind of close that gap. When you get to the rim, there's gonna be contact a lot of the time. When you're bringing it up the court as a point guard, people are gonna be aggressive and physical with you to be able to handle their physicality and do this while maintaining a pretty calm composure, while still keeping your eyes and focus on the floor to be able to make decisions and to be able to work through tight spaces, you're gonna be in a pretty good spot for college basketball. And then lastly, number five is confidence and composure. So this is just the purely psychological side of things. College basketball is an up and down thing. A lot of the players that I work with, sometimes they'll be all the way up here. They have a couple great games, right? It's like the top of a roller coaster and boom, they have a bad game. They lose, the coach yells at them, and it seems like they're in rock bottom. If you can prevent that huge roller coaster here, kind of right here, like these smaller waves, staying at that baseline, staying composed, again, you're gonna be a lot better fit for this level. Now, confidence is one of the toughest things to work on as a hooper, tougher than any skill, I promise you guys that. But if you're able to work through these trials and tribulations, maintain that confidence, maintain your motivation and your love for the game, the passion. This is really gonna build some longevity in your career, help you continue to elevate, help you to work through these tough times and eventually have the best career possible. And this doesn't just go for college basketball, this goes for every single level of hooper. So hopefully these made sense. Again, of course, there are gonna be times 
times where, yes, you're maybe not the best defender in the world, but you do the other four super well, so you have a great career. But if your goal is to play college basketball, I do want you to focus on these five, work on them day in and day out, Make sure that you're never forgetting any of these five components. So good luck in your journey. The process of preparing and working to play college basketball is a super fun one. Even if you never get there, you learn so much. You can become a really good player and it'll allow you to continue to chase the opportunities that basketball will provide at whatever level you want to play at. My goal for you guys is that I can provide you with the best resources to just help you maximize your potential. If I bring you even a little bit closer, I'm satisfied. My day is made. And that's why I make these videos. So thanks for tuning in. As always, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Binding Means Basketball for a lot more like this. Continue luck with your basketball journey. Stay tuned.